Good morning, family, friends, believers, and unbelievers alike. Welcome to another Sunday School for the week of May 23rd, 2020. And the title of this week's lesson is Jesus is the Jesus is Lord of all. Excuse me. And it's coming from Romans 10, 11 through 21. I'm going to uh, do a quick prayer and then it's going to jump right into the lesson. Our Father and our God, Lord, thank you so much for your mercy, for the God, your favor, and your grace that woke us up this morning, Lord God. I pray that your favor, Father God, uh, shines on us as we go throughout the day, Lord God. I pray, Father God, that this message would not fall on deaf ears, Lord God. I pray that someone would take heed to this message, Lord God, and be blessed, Lord. I ask you now to take me out of the equation, Father God, and allow the Holy Spirit to rest, rule, and abide now, Lord. In your Son, Jesus' name, I pray under your authority and power, God. Amen. Um, now, indulge with me, if you will, uh, with my uh, with this introduction uh, to uh, the uh, the lesson. Now, in Greek mythology, I'm I'm paraphrasing from out of the expository. Now, from Greek mythology, we know that they had like numerous gods. Right, and these gods had like uh, they had control over certain domains or certain sections uh, of the earth. So, for example, Hades was was the god of um, god of the dead. So he controlled the underground. Um, he had control over all uh, the dead souls, but he had no control over human life. Uh, Poseidon. Poseidon was the god of uh, the ocean. So he had control of the winds and the waves, but when it came to the land, he had no power. Now, they say Zeus was the most powerful god of all um, those mythological gods. Um, he was the god of, um, over, the, over the sky and thunder. And, but even Zeus, the most powerful god, um, power was uh, wasn't unlimited. But we know the one Lord and God and our Savior that has that has unlimited power because He created uh, everything. So in this week's lesson, um, the Jews were arrogantly proud that they were God's chosen people because they were God's chosen people and they uh, excuse me and that salvation belonged to them alone because they were because they they you know they thought they were they figured they, they're God's chosen people God chose us so all salvation just belongs to us. Uh, salvation don't belongs to no, no other uh, uh, nation or race of people. Although they were God's chosen, chosen, they missed the point of the gospel. They missed why Christ uh, came, because Romans uh, ten thirteen tells us. For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And the key word there is whosoever. So salvation didn't just belong to the Jews only. They thought so, but whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So that goes out for every nation, every tribe, every uh, race of people. If they call on them, Lord, they shall be saved. They thought the law, so the Jews thought, because it was God's chosen people, so they thought the law, so that's the law of Moses. They thought the law and their good deeds could save them, save them. 
So many Jews rejected and didn't, didn't believe in the Messiah when he came. So believe in faith. So they had no, they had no faith in this Messiah when he came. So believe in faith goes hand in hand. So here, Abraham serves as a good example of someone who, who was saved by faith. Um, I'm paraphrasing here the verse because I, I don't know the verse uh, exactly. But when the scripture says, um, uh, Abraham believed in, in in God, and God, excuse me, God um, counted uh, counted him as righteous. So we know that Abraham was the father of the father of the um, the Israel um, nation. Could God promised that he would um, be the father of many nations? But Abraham serves as example of someone that faith because Abraham. Abraham trusted God enough and believed in God enough to leave his comfort zone, leave his sense of security to go somewhere he had no idea where he's going, somewhere that he did not know his future, he did not know nothing about his future. So that's why I. That's why when I'm studying this, the Lord revealed to me like Abraham is someone. Um, it was my, my chosen person, but he believed in his heart. He believed me and trusted me. He wasn't arrogant, arrogant about like the Jews here. Now, when I spoke that the Jews thought the law um, and their good deeds could uh, could save them, I'm not saying God's laws, his commandments, his commandments are, uh, are not, are not important, but we cannot be saved by simply obeying, obeying it only for, for Romans 10, 11 says, Whosoever believe on him shall not be ashamed. Um, which Paul quoted um, from Isaiah 28, 16. And I'm going to read um, uh, that verse so we can, we, we can get a better understanding of what he's saying here. So Isaiah 28, uh, verse 16 reads as this. And I'm reading from the, the NLT, the New Living Translation. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Look, I am placing a foundation stone in Israel, a firm and tested stone. It is a precious cornerstone that is safe to build on. Whosoever believe, whosoever, whosoever believe need never be shaken. So, as I as I um, include this section, is um, that verse is basically saying if uh, saying if our faith is built on anything less than Christ. It will fall apart like a house of cards. Uh, like, you know, we have the standard standard play cards. You play, you know, poker, poker or goldfish with your kids, or you know, cards. You build it up into a structure, a pyramid or a house. You build it. You build it up. You build it up. But if you just wave your hand at it or lightly blow it, it will fall apart. So. That verse in Isaiah is saying, if our faith, our belief, if our security is not is not built on that cornerstone, on Jesus Christ, anything 
And anything that happens in our lives, any circumstances, we're just gonna fall apart. Like we're, we have, we, there's nothing solid to stand on. And that's why we need Christ in our lives. That is Christ in our life, that solid cornerstone that we can uh, stand on and set our security in and it will be that will be our our sense of purpose and and refuge when we need um, that in our lives and that with that it, it wraps up the first uh, section and that first section excuse me I didn't say it covers uh, verse 11 through verse 13, um, that section. And as I move to the second section, as I was doing a study, the Lord uh, reminded me, uh, reminded me of something in this section. I'm going to read uh, these verses uh, for uh, context. Um, these verses are verse 14 through 17, and it reads um, as follows. And once again, I'm reading from the New Living Translation version. Um, it says, But how can they call on him to say, excuse me, but how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him, him unless someone tells them, tells them? And how can someone go and tell them without being sent? Being sent. This is why the scriptures say, how beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring good news. But not everyone welcomes the good news. Uh, for Isaiah the prophets, prophet said, Lord, who has uh, believed our message? So faith comes by hearing, that is hearing the good news about Christ. So what those verses, what the Lord remind me in those verses, these verses remind me of the Great Commission. Jesus gave his disciples, his disciples gave his, gave, um, these verses, excuse me, remind me of the Great Commission Jesus gave to his disciples and to us who are believers. Jesus told his disciples to make more disciples by preaching, baptizing, and teaching. So like it says in these verses, it says, like it says in verse like, um, um, but how can they call on Jesus to save them? I'm just paraphrasing, like Jesus saved them and, um, uh, uh, unless they believe in him. Uh, and how can they believe in him if they never heard about him? This is a great commission. Cause this is this is the Great Commission, because Jesus um, and excuse me, and verse fifteen when it says, and how will anyone anyone go and tell them without being sent? But Jesus sent it was after he rose and he was on the earth with them for so many days and he was sent into heaven he gave them this great commission go forth and disciple the world to spread the gospel so here it's it um the lord reminded me of the great commission that he gave to the disciples gave to us to go out and disciple the world tell people about him like here if if we don't go as if Christians, if we don't go out and tell others about Christ, how are they going to believe in it? believe in Him if they never heard about him, never heard about Him? And because, like I said, Jesus already commissioned this. 
Here you sent us out to do that. So if we don't go and tell, then no one's going to know who Christ is. Jesus and Jesus can give this command because God gave him the authority over heaven, the heaven and earth. So God's um, Jesus has the authority because God gave him the authority and Jesus sent us out. So if we say we are true Christians and true believers and true followers of Christ, then we would take heed to this commission and go out and tell people about the wonderful, uh, wonderful Savior that saved us from our penalty, can save them from their penalty, which is uh, sin, uh, which results in spiritual death. Jesus is Lord of all and he died for the sins of people from all nations so whether it is uh, a neighbor next door or you're a missionary in another country make disciples as a believer it is not an option whether or not uh, we feel like it but a command command if we call Jesus Lord and Savior so um, believing in God is not a I feel like it thing or believing believing that Jesus died for us is not a feel like it thing it's either you believe or you don't believe and spreading the gospel is not a I feel like it thing either is either you spread the gospel or you don't spread the gospel. Is either you take is it take heed heed to Christ's great commission or you don't. So if you don't, you reject you're you're rejecting Christ. And if you take heed, then you accept him for what he did for you, and then you go and tell people about what he did for you. That's so that's spreading the gospel and as you making more disciples. And that's what the Lord revealed to me um, regarding this second section, um, verse four, verses 14 through 17. And as I move to the third section, uh, I, I'm, I'm also going to read uh, these verses for uh, context. As verse 18 uh, through 21. Because this lesson text is coming from Romans 10, 11 through 21. So these uh, are the last verses. So I'm going to read those verses. And it reads like this. Uh, verse 18. But I ask, have the people of Israel actually heard the message? Yes, they have. The message has gone throughout the earth and the word to all the world. But I ask, did the people of Israel really understand? Yes, they did. For even in, for even in the time of Moses, God said, I will arouse your jealousy through people who are not even a nation. I will provoke your anger through the foolish Gentiles. And later, Isaiah spoke boldly for God, saying, I was found by people who were not looking for me. I showed myself, I showed myself to those who were not asking for me. But regarding Israel, God said, all day long I opened my arms to them, but they were disobedient and rebellious. That was verse 18 through 21. Due to the outright refusal to believe in Jesus, uh, Jesus, believe in Jesus, many of the, excuse me, Due, due to the outright refusal to believe in Jesus, in Jesus, 
many of the Jew, many, uh, by excuse me, by many of the Jews, God offered His salvation to the Gentiles. Um, like when it said in verse uh, verse twenty, people who were not looking for Me, those are the Gentiles. Gentiles, the Gentiles didn't know nothing, know nothing about God. Um, so they wasn't looking for Him. Looking for him, and I'm gonna stop here and give like a scenario. Okay, like a parent. So we know that God is our father. So God is our parent. But uh, indulge indulge with me, if you will, like a parent. Say a, say, um, you buy your uh, your child uh, this this nice um, um, this nice extravagant gift. Okay. You give it to your you give the gift to your kid. Excuse me, your, your child. And the child's like, oh, okay. I don't really want that. I don't really want that. It's not the right color. So as a parent, I'm just paraphrasing. Uh, I'm just uh, this is my human mind. Uh, this is I think what God God said. I think what God said was okay. I'm, I'm giving you this gift, this precious gift, and you don't want it. I, you're my children, you're my child, you're my children, you're my chosen children. So I'm gonna give you this. I'm giving you this, this, a, this priceless, extravagant gift, and you're not gonna accept it. Okay. So you know what? I'm gonna go out. I ain't gonna something. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna take the gift back. I'm gonna go out and give it to one of the neighborhood kids. Right. So my thought process is that God was like, I'm gonna, I'm, this is what I'm gonna do. And then when you see the, that neighborhood kid with that, uh, that extraordinary gift, you're gonna, you're gonna feel some kind of way like, oh, that should have been mine. That, that's mine, that was mine. That's just my human mind thinking, <laughs> thinking what God did to the, uh, God was thinking about um, for the Israelites. So, as I got back to the lesson, therefore, many Gentiles that didn't even know about Christ found him and now believe. Now, Gentiles are us, you or me. If you were not born Jewish, then are born uh, it born. Uh, you're not from is not born um, Israel, then you're a Gentile. People from different nations are Gentiles. Born in America, you're a Gentile. If you're born in South America, Canada, or Africa, you're a Gentile because you're not Jewish. Uh, God chose Jew. God chose Jews as His chosen people. So we're the Gentiles. So. His chosen people didn't want the precious gift that he gave to them, which was Jesus. So he gave it to uh, different nations. He sent he sent out disciples to different nations, and the disciples ministered. They ministered. They preached the gospel, and thank God for that. That we came to know Christ for ourselves, and we uh, accepted that gift. And now we're saved. And as I continue, some to, um, no, this may um, not con uh, I'm continuing and to make it practical. Some people that claim to be Christians are spiritually blind. Spiritually blind. Meanwhile, those who have been who never been in a church or even heard. Uh, preaching before are the most um, receptive to God's message of salvation. So the, pe the people that you you look at and like ah, they are um, heathens or they're sinners, but I'm this upright Christian. They would sit there more and pay more attention and listen. Uh, more intently to a preach word or even a uh, even a, a story 
told by a a god uh, a, a god, godly person or an evangelist, and they will listen more than um, someone who claims they're a Christ, they're a true Christian, true Christian, and that's why that's what God, that's why God chose to send the disciples out to other nation to other nations and to the Gentiles, because he actually you like you would want to hear a story about someone that could that can save your soul that can save you from the all the hell you've been going through all this bad circumstances you go through you love to hear a story like that but we sometimes as christian that we read a little passage here or a little know a little verse there we think we know it all but someone that who has no knowledge or no understanding of who Christ is and what he did, uh, he did for this uh, this world, they will be more receptive and um, be open to hear um, about about uh, um, the story of Christ uh, more than uh, a so-called Christian. And as I close um, on this the lesson this week, I want to close uh, from what I what I read um, in the expository because I, I liked how it was it was put uh, concerning um, this these last verses um, about the Jews not accepting the offer that God. Um, gave, uh, gave them the Old Testament. The Old Testament had anticipated Israel's resistance of God's acceptance of the Gentiles. Just being a line of Abraham, just being a line of Abraham, did not automatically make a person righteous before God. Each person must make for himself the decision to accept God's righteousness through faith, through believing, through believing that Christ died on the cross for our sins. God has children, but it but it but it has never been said that God has grandchildren. Parent, um, having parents who are believers does not make one a believer. Paul's partner, Timothy, had a mother and a grandmother who were believers of the, who were, belie who or excuse me, who were followers of the Lord. But even Timothy had to make the, the, the decision for himself to believe in Christ. So it's not So that's saying it's not um, because your grandmother um, is is um, who your grandmother loves the Lord and she's in tune um, with with um, with what God says. She prays and she's really um, a real true follower. Of Christ is not because she know God. I know Christ that that makes you know Christ. We all have to come to the realization that no matter who mother or father, grandmother, aunt, uncle, whatever knows God, we have to know uh, God and we have to know what Jesus did for us personally. So it's not enough to, oh, okay, I'm in this Christian family. Oh, I'm saved. No, we have to know, we have to believe in our hearts that Jesus Christ died on the cross, rose, ascend, ascended to heaven, sitting on the right hand for, at the Father, interceding for us. We have to know that he came and died to set everything right back with God, that we messed up. So, with that saying, and 
as this lesson closed, please, if you do not believe in Christ, please just be, be curious enough and be open enough to um, pick up a, a Bible plan or a devotional or listen to sit, sit and listen to a your old your grandmother or grandfather who really loved God or aunt aunt and uncle of what Christ really did for you really did for us so with that I, I say thank you for allowing me to share this message with you guys I pray that your day is blessed so Thank you once again and peace.